Hi. Most mornings when I wake up, I beat John to the shower because there's only enough hot water for one of us. There's always a text message from Nick saying that he's outside ready to go. We carpool to work, the conversation begins, and the partnership continues. <laughs> this is taken a couple hours ago by Nick, and this is just a quick snapshot of how we start our day. My name is Nathaniel Rue, this is Jonathan Neiman, and that's Nicholas Jermay. Uh, together, we started a company called Sweetgreen. When you think about partnerships and how they come to be, it's pretty funny. Most people growing up think about what they want to become when they grow older, what kind of job they want to get, or even more importantly, who they're going to marry. But most people don't realize that you're the average of the five people you hang around with the most, both personally and professionally. I think we learned this from our parents, that partnerships are so valuable. Nick's parents have been working together for 25 years. John's parents, and John's dad and his two brothers have been working together for over 40 years. And my dad and his sister have been working together for over 20 years. And from them, we really learned the true value and the DNA of a great partnership. In our business, or before we even had a business or a business idea, we were just students in college with a shared passion about entrepreneurship. Before Sweetgreen, or at the time it was called Greens, it was just a business plan. It was just a business plan filed away. It was another creative exercise, another creative idea, but we realized we were missing a ton of pieces of the puzzle. But it wasn't until we found each other and the three of us sat down and committed is when we really started the journey of Sweetgreen. We believe that in this day and age, so many people talk about ideas, the next big idea, the next big invention, ideas worth spreading, but we believe that the big picture is really the partnership that lies behind the ideas. It's the people. And from what we learned from our parents and from years with them and studying other businesses, we found that a successful partnership is really a combination of three different things. One is loyalty and trust, complementary skills, and most important, a shared vision and a shared mission together. When all of these three things are combined, it's exp it becomes the power of the partnership becomes exponential. It's the chemistry, it's the special sauce, it's, you know, it's that moment when you know you're a partner in crime. And some of the most famous, most successful people, companies, partnerships, musicians and artists, all have had partners back in the day. They can finish each other's sentences, and they're all woven from the same cloth, even, if there's, even how different they may be. Most people focus on the idea and not the partnership. We believe the genius is not in the individual, but it's in the combination. So, as Nate said, the first part of a partnership is the same thing as the first part of a friendship. It's loyalty and trust. So in 1968, Jimmy Page, Robert Plant, John Paul Jones, and John Bonham got together and they started a band called Led Zeppelin. This would become one of the most prolific partnerships in rock and roll. After nine years, they would tour huge stadiums, sell millions of albums, and be considered one of the greatest bands of all time. But after nine years, John Bonham, their beloved drummer, passed away. They immediately canceled their tour and issued a statement. We wish it to be known that the loss of our dear friend and the deep sense of undivided harmony felt by ourselves and our manager have led us to decide that we could not continue as we were. Signed, Led Zeppelin. So the greatest band in rock and roll quit because the drummer died. Now, no disrespect to drummers, because they're very important, but it wasn't the lead singer of the band. There's so many bands replaced drummers. They quit because one piece of that magic puzzle, that special sauce was no longer there. That chemistry did not exist anymore. So, you guys are familiar with Led Zeppelin. You know that Jimmy Page had a career before Led Zeppelin. He had a career after Led Zeppelin. It was not Led Zeppelin. That chemistry, that partnership, 
is what made it so special. It was the combination of all of those pieces. The second piece to an incredible partnership is partners that complement each other's skills. So it's, two, it's different pieces, two, three, or four pieces of a puzzle coming together to form a whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. One of the most famous examples, of course, is Steve and Steve. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. So the story is, is widely told that you know, Steve, Steve Jobs was the innovative visionary that took St Steve Wozniak's engineering and what he engineered, he marketed it, packaged it, and sold it. But if you really dig deep into it, if it wasn't for that combination, it, would, it really wouldn't have happened. Steve Wozniak, who actually created the computer, wanted to give it away practically for free to his homebrew computer club. He, he wanted to give it away for free. And not only that, he thought that they should make 50 of them. And it should just be the, the motherboard, that, that thing that you're seeing right there. They should just make that. And they should expect the hobbyists, the hackers, to go buy the keyboard, the screen, and everything else. But at the same time, if it wasn't for Steve Wozniak, Steve Jobs would probably be, still be in India dropping LSD and meditating. <laughs> so it was this perfect pairing of these people at this perfect time with these complementary talents that made what is now the most valuable company in the world. Steve Jobs went on to start other companies afterwards. And his other computer company started, no one's really heard of it, it's called Next. Steve Wozniak started a number of companies after them. You've definitely never heard of them. But together, they created the most innovative company of our generation. The last part of a successful partnership is truly the most important part. Because complementary skills and loyalty and trust is what gets you started. That's what can bring partners together. It's like, hey, you can do this, and I can do this, and we're friends. Let's start a business. But that's just the beginning. In order for any business and any partnership to be successful, it comes down to the mission. It's the why. Without the why, you're just another business selling another widget that nobody cares about. The why is that glue. It's that super glue that, that makes things special. It's what holds everything together and takes you beyond the idea of, let's just have a business that sells something to make money. So Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield met in high school gym class. They uh, shared a passion for food, kind of, kind of like us. And, uh, and they decided they wanted to start a business. They're, you know, they, were, they were really good friends. They had that passion. And they decided they wanted to start a business. Um, Cohen and Greenfield, they wanted to start bagels. They thought that was a great idea. But they couldn't figure it out. So they decided that they were going to start an ice cream shop. They borrowed $12,000 and opened their first shop and called it Ben & Jerry's. But it wasn't Chunky Monkey or Half Baked <laughs> that got them out of bed every day. That's not what made Ben & Jerry's one of the biggest consumer products brands that is out there today. What made them special was their why, their commitment to their community. They don't measure success solely by their bottom line. They measure success by how much they can give back to the community. It's the double bottom line, or as we call it at Sweet Green, the win-win-win. It was that commitment to make an impact that made Ben & Jerry's truly stand out. So these are three great examples of what a really powerful partnership can do to a business. And when we talk about partnerships, we don't mean any partnership, because obviously if you look around the world, there's millions of partnerships. Sports, food, technology, music, the world is fill filled with them. But this powerful partnership, when you hit all three of these points, that's when it becomes collaborative and, and the power becomes exponential. So why aren't more young, aspiring entrepreneurs focusing on finding their partners. Why are they all focused on the big idea? At a very young age, we're surrounded by this idea of building personal connections. 
We, we want to build friendships. We want to date people. We want to build our personal network. But we never focus on the idea of finding professional counterparts, of finding your professional soulmate, people that understand your mission, people that you can trust, people that really you can start a business together and ideate with. And really, that, that's for the three of us, that's really what it began before the idea. We were able to really come around a mission and agree that we wanted to start something. We wanted to create something, and then the idea came. And that's really important. So imagine if people, all the way down from six years old up to high school to college, and even an MBA class, which is where, at grad schools, which, which is where they normally reach that point where they try to find people that they click with. Imagine if you could start that 10 years before. You could start brainstorming, ideating. The, the world of entrepreneurship would change completely. So as Nate kind of said in the beginning, the three of us spend a lot of time together. We spend 20 hours a day together sometimes. This maniacal collaboration, as unhealthy as it sounds, is how we run our business because we're able to have really long conversations and make decisions as long as we need to. So when we need to make a really important decision, it'll be a 20-hour conversation, a week-long conversation, a month-long conversation, all day long, just because that's what we need to do to make sure we make the right decision for the business. Every decision we make, every decision we make gets triple filtered, challenged, flips upside down. And at the end, we come up with a result that's best for the business. So in result, the next big thing is Focusing on partnerships and finding your professional counterparts before the big idea. Finding that magic, that partner, that partnership is more important than the idea. So where one plus one is greater than two, or in our case, one plus one plus one is greater than three. Thank you. Thank you.